Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Atheist Experience. I'm your host, Matt Delhoney. Joining me this week, Jeff D. Hi, folks. And for those of you who aren't actually watching the program, if you're listening to the podcast, yes, in fact, I am here in drag, uh, looking way better than you thought I was going to, uh, I must say. Uh, quick notes. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about this in a minute, but we'll get the usual announcements out of the way. Uh, this is a live call-in program. We'll have the number up for you shortly. It's sponsored by the Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. And the ACA has weekly meetings every Sunday at uh, Romeo's on Barton Springs Road, uh, except for the first Sunday of the month when we host a lecture series at the Austin History Center located at 9th and Guadalupe. You can find out more about the ACA at www.atheist-community.org. In addition to this program, the ACA also sponsors a bi-weekly internet, well, it's a weekly that's be looking kind of bi-weekly, internet audio podcast called The Nonprofits, and you can go to nonprofitsradio.com for more information. Um, we've had studio problems the last two weeks. We are expecting to have a show this coming Saturday, uh, but not the Saturday after that, as I will be in Oklahoma for the Free OK uh, Oklahoma Free Thought Convention and we'll get more information about that next week as well. Um, after this program is over, any atheist or atheist-friendly person is welcome to join us at El Arroyo for dinner, uh, drinks, or conversation, whatever. Uh, you do not have to be a member to attend any of our events. As long as you're atheist-friendly atheist, atheist friendly and not coming down to preach, proselytize, or provoke, please come on down. If you don't get through on the telephone today or if you don't want to, you can email tv at atheist-community.org. And that gets to myself, the co-host, some of the people behind the scenes. We cannot possibly answer all the emails that come in, but we do try to read all of them. And if you put AETV or NPR in the subject line, that will make it through almost everybody's spam filters, I believe. So why am I sitting here looking fabulous? I don't know, Matt. Last time I was on the show, you had just had an operation. <laughs> uh, that, that's incidental. Um, that's not it? Okay. There was a competition for those who uh, don't know the backstory. I'll get to it real quick. There was a competition to raise money for Camp Quest, a, summer, a secular summer camp for kids. And um, there were several bloggers uh, and individuals like myself who joined together to try to raise more money for Camp Quest than PZ Myers of Faringula fame. And he agreed to, if he won, to like shave off his beard. And so we agreed to do all sorts of other things if we won. And as you may have guessed, we won. We raised about $30,000 uh, between the two groups to send kids to summer camp. Um, for $30,000, I'll dress up like pretty much anything you want me to. Um, but I made a blog post yesterday that kind of summed up the process that I went through, um, what all we did, how I didn't cut corners, and where I had to cut corners. You can visit the blog at wwwatheist hyphen experience oh, atheistexperience.blogspot.com and there's a post up yesterday kind of explaining everything that went down um, and that it was a very fun and educational process and I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this um, because it really doesn't have that much to do with atheism of the show apart from that we we raised money for this but it it was an educational experience it gave me a little insight into what women go through it gave me some insight into what uh, people with gender identity issues go through, um, cross-dressers, transsexuals, transgendered individuals, uh, the process of trying to shop when clothes simply don't fit, um, as well as the reaction of people that you run into. I mean, just when it was just me with painted fingernails uh, Saturday uh, afternoon, uh, the reactions from people w was very enlightening. And also my own response to their reaction taught me a lot too, because do I sit there and just, you know, shrug it off as you can think whatever you can think, or do I back out and say, oh, no, no, I really don't do this. I'm doing a drag show because we raised money. And I have to admit, I did both at different times. Um, so I kind of learned a little bit about what I am and I'm not comfortable with. And it gave me a little taste of what some other people go through. Um, I think that it's a good exercise to kind of realize that people don't always fit into easy boxes. Um, and it doesn't matter what the labels are that you try to put on people, sometimes somebody will fit. A lot of times, it's a lot more broad of an experience than that. And so we had gay and straight, and then we added bi. Well, that doesn't cover the full gamut either, and human sexuality may be this broad spectrum that defies actual labels. But the important thing that I wanted to address today is, as we try to go through and have a pretty normal show, is the the merits of an argument are entirely dependent on the argument itself. 
who says it, what their credentials are, what they're wearing, what their sex life is, whether or not you like the way they look, whether or not it's weird, um, doesn't matter. Arguments stand and fall on their own merits, and it doesn't matter whether it's coming from somebody in drag or from somebody on a podium or in a pulpit. Have to evaluate the arguments strictly on their own merits and set everything else aside, and that's not always easy. We are, we are a prejudicial, bigoted bunch, um, who, and we extend our fears uh, across the board. Things, some things are very discomforting to people. Um, you know, watching same-sex couples kiss is discomforting to some people. Seeing a man in drag is discomforting for other people. But becoming aware of that and seeing it more often and realizing that these are people, and that's the critical aspect, that we are all people, is a good way to kind of broaden your horizons, raise your consciousness, as you know, Dawkins has been promoting, and maybe, maybe we can get to the point where we stop trying to put everybody in little boxes and stop worrying about things that don't matter. Because what I'm wearing has absolutely no bearing on what I'm going to say for the rest of the show. And that's all I have to say about that. What do you got, Jeff? I've got nothing to say about that. As far as, far as I'm concerned, the way people dress, or rules about how people are supposed to dress are pretty much completely made up stupid traditions. Yeah. And I don't care. Yeah, it's like what makes I just don't this... care. It doesn't mean anything to me. I I I I I have I can have issues with being deceived. Hmm? Right? Uh that's potentially an issue when it comes to cross dressing. But then it it wouldn't be a problem if our society didn't have these artificial, made up bullshit rules about how yeah. the different genders are supposed to dress in the first place. What, what, so what to makes me, this it's a big, big distraction, female. big waste of time. I don't care. Yeah. What, I don't care what makes the dress I'm wearing women's clothing? I mean, yeah. just the fact that we decided can, it was. You can find countries around the world where men will wear pretty much any of the various things you've got on. Yeah. And good for them. Hey, we're, we got a full line of callers and an hour-long show, so I'm not going to waste a whole bunch more time talking about this. Yay. Let's go ahead and get right on to calls. William in Bolivia, how are you? Or Bolivia, North hey, Carolina. Man, pretty good. How about you? We're doing well. Hi, William. Okay. Uh, my question is how close are atheism and humanism? And I guess before you answer that question, I kind of want to get a agreed-upon definition of humanism. The belief that human beings should be first priority over dogma, be it religious, political, or any traditional, or any other ideological dogma. Okay. So how close are those two related? Is, is that a fair definition of humanism? My understanding is that there are religious, and I'm not, I don't mean just... Um, uh, atheists, atheists gathering and calling their humanist gathering a church. I, but as my understanding is that there are actually Christian humanists. Is that not so? so that, that's isn't there, that's aren't one there very... reason why I wanted to... I, I mean, that probably is so. That's kind of one reason why I want to get a definition, because yeah. there are various ones, and I guess if you got a better definition, kind of... I would, well, I guess we can stick with here. atheism and secular humanism as opposed to religious humanism. Yeah, if we're talking secular humanism, then your definition was correct. Okay, so how close are those two linked? N not. Yeah. There, there's, not. There's no necessary link. Like, uh, well, I suppose if you're a secular humanist, right, you but, would be a, an atheist by... Well, I so you can I don't believe know. there's a god, but then you can call yourself a secular humanist. If you're like a d various deists, could be secular humanists, right? Couldn't they? Sure. Thinking sure, that god, there's about, a god, yeah. but the, he he's not he's not where we turn to ter to determine how we should treat each other. We worry about ourselves, right? Those are humanists, yet they believe in a god. So those are theistic humanists. Yeah. So they're they're not necessarily uh, tied together. Um, now, having said that. Um, a great many of the atheists that I deal with who are atheists for skeptical reasons, they're intellectual atheists, etc., um, they're also secular humanists. Uh, they ne may not necessarily agree with every tenet of the secular humanist manifesto, um, and they may not join secular humanist groups, but they tend to identify along the same lines. So in practice, what you find in atheist groups um, is a, a really good uh, correlation or overlapping of, of the groups, but there's no requirement that one be both. And, and I think the reason why you find that overlap is because atheism doesn't tell you anything about how right. we should deal with one another. 
So atheists looking around for guidance uh, as to how to comport themselves will latch onto things like secular humanism because that, that, is, a, um, that is a viewpoint on that subject. That a atheism just doesn't, doesn't say anything about that. All it says is we don't believe there's any gods. Right. Well, that makes some sense. I mean, I knew I was kind of being a little generalized, but for the most part, I do kind of see, and I, and I guess that kind of does answer it. Okay. Um, I guess one more thing before I go is, are there any issues that maybe a secular humanist might speak out against that aren't religiously tied one way or another as a rule? I don't, I don't understand your question. Ah. Uh, well, I mean, because most of the issues y'all speak out are religiously based because, I mean, it is, I mean, it does do damage, you know, the anti-gay, yada, yada, but there are a few that religion has nothing to do one way or another. Do you ever, like, speak out and call bullshit flag to that? I don't know if I can cuss. I'm sorry sure. if I can't. But. Sure. I, I, will, I will call bullshit anywhere where it's deserved. It doesn't matter to me whether or not a religion or some religion or all religions have a position on it. Um, I, I'm not just, oh, look, here's a position that some religious group has or that we would consider religious, so let's rail against it. I'm m more about, uh, as, a, as an atheist, skeptic, critical thinking, secular humanist, rationalist, rationalist I'm, I'm a fan of just let's solve these issues, let's address these issues no matter what. And, and in that vein, I can work right alongside a religious people who agree. There are plenty of religious people, for example, who support church-state separation, um, even though there are other religious people who don't. Um, it, it doesn't matter to me if every church and every orga organized religion suddenly came down in favor of church-state separation. Whatever non-religious group that was left that was against it is simply wrong, and they deserve to be challenged on that. Okay. Cool. That's good. Well, thanks. I guess you got other calls, so I'll let you go. Appreciate your time. Sure. Thanks for calling, William. Appreciate All right. it. Bye, William. No problem. Bye. We've got Tommy in L.A. How are you? Hey, how you doing? Hi, Tommy. Hi. I have uh, two points I want to make. First of all, I disagree with you about gender roles. And second of all, uh, what do you think about the belief in God and the behavior of the immune system, just like the disgust of gay men is also a behavior of the immune system? Hey. I'm, uh, can, you, can you do the question part again real quick? It, we're, yeah, and, and control room, the volume is kind of low. Yeah. We're having trouble hearing the caller. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, try it again. Yeah, my, my point is uh, I believe that gender roles should be respected and valued because most likely they were they evolved to uh, benefit our offspring, you know, and uh, the a behavior immune system, I mean, excuse me, the belief in God could actually be a behavior immune system, just like the disgust of gay men is a behavior immune system. This is Charlie, by the way. <laughs> hey, hey, this is Check him, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah, bye. <laughs> Okay. Thanks, though. Thanks for calling in as Tommy, you batshit crazy liar. Uh, yeah, I don't care what your views on, on gender roles are, but with, with regard to God as a possibly evolutionary belief or a belief that has some value, uh -huh. um, his actual claim was uh, along the lines of that this might, having a particular God belief might protect you from more harmful beliefs. Uh, um. And, and, and in response to the idea that anything that evolved should therefore be something that we just automatically accept and don't question, yeah. um, evolution happens over very long periods of time, and the long period of time over which those gender roles you're talking about evolved, even assuming that there's any, any validity to the idea that gender roles are an evolved trait, um, which I think it's a lot less clear than that. Uh, but even if that was the case, we don't live the way that people lived over the last several million years. And the idea that we should just, you know, close our eyes and accept whatever uh, evolution has foisted on us without thinking about it, without, without being willing to move on from that if we have a better, fairer, more just way of doing things is ridiculous.
Yeah, it's typically referred to as the naturalistic fallacy, that because something is natural, it is somehow right. And what you're doing in that case is you are taking uh, the natural world, the, the process of evolution, which is mindless, without intent, that is just uh, casting about in whatever the reality happens to be, and you are infusing it with some intent and purpose and a goal, um, and, then, and then declaring that that goal is good, as if, you know, uh, uh, my five fingers, uh, that, that's the way nature intended me to be. So there's something wrong if, if, if a mutant is born with six fingers, even if it turns out to be more beneficial. I don't know, maybe they can play the piano better. Right. Uh, now, not to mention the fact that if it weren't for those kinds of variations, we wouldn't have evolution in the first place. Yeah, yeah it's, it's uh, just absurd. Michael from North Bergen, New Jersey. Oh my God, I'm a huge fan of you guys. What's up? Hey. How you doing? Good, man. I've been watching your show almost every week. Cool. Yeah, so basically I just wanted to call in and ask you guys, where do you guys stand on free will? <laughs> uh, are we going to get into a long thing about this? I, I think there is a thing that it's fair to call free will. And uh, I am what they call a compatibilist. That is to say, I accept that the universe is basically deterministic. But I think within the bounds of determinism, there are things you can point at and reasonably refer to them as free will. I mean, the way I define free will is like choice over opinion and thought. And actions, voluntary actions, are derived from thought and opinion. So, I mean, do you really think that you have control over your own thoughts and opinions? Um, I think in order to say you don't have control over your thoughts and opinions, you have to ignore meaningful distinctions between, like, yourself and the rest of the universe. And my view is a little bit different. Once you get to that particular, your particular definition of free will, um, I, don't, I don't think that that necessarily exists, and I think the scientific information... Uh, is starting to show that it doesn't, that decisions are essentially made before we're consciously aware of them, and therefore, while it's still a part of us, it's not a part of any process that we would identify with the kind of choice you're talking about. Although I do, I do agree um, with Jeff, I'm also a compatibilist with respect to specific definitions, in that the, the types of things that we would count and qualify as, as free will um, exist. They may still be uh, at their core, uh, illusions. But I, I don't think that that matters much for every conversa any conversation that we really care about free will, which is holding people responsible for their actions um, and whether or not someone else is intentionally imposing and preventing somebody else from doing what it is that they quote unquote will. And as a compatibilist, I don't have the slightest difficulty with the discovery that uh, that, we, uh, that we have choices that are made in our brains before the conscious part of our awareness becomes uh, aware of them because those are just different parts of my brain and it's still my responsibility. Yes. So to me, that, that is a, a distinction without a difference. Uh, further, I think that it is important not to let go of the term free will because it is attached to notions of personal responsibility and I think that it's a huge mistake. Uh, it's throwing the baby out with the bathwater if we say, well, free will doesn't turn out to be this magical st uh, nonsense that religionists tried to tell us it was. Therefore, it doesn't exist at all. Because the term still refers to the question, refers back to the question of, is a person responsible? Is it, is it fair to hold a person responsible for the things that they did? You guys are going in the direction of responsibility. I was just going in the direction of do we really have choice over our... I, I understand, and that's why I... Basically, what you described was some version of uh, libertarian free will. And, okay. So. And I don't think that that sort of free will exists. So with your particular definition, no, I don't think so. But I completely agree with what Jeff just said, because we're talking about something that's different. But anyway, there's, a, there's an episode of the Nonprofits, if you dig through the archives, where we oh, did a, a three-hour show where wow. we all sat around and debated uh, free will with everybody ganging up yeah. on Dennis. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and Dennis won because, um, you know, from my perspective, he, I wasn't quite uh, aware of just how 
um, uh, just how far he was willing to go to defend his position, how far he was willing to uh, to uh, to stretch things. Uh, but that, that's not fair to Dennis. He's not here. Yeah. We should have a rematch. But it's worth pointing out that Dennis has on the show actually agreed that he agrees with us on what's actually there. Yeah. It's whether or not he wants to label it that, which yeah. is another set. I think but the, thanks. the label is usually important. Yeah. But thanks a lot for calling, Michael. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks. Take care. All right. Um, is it... Horica in Panama City? It's a uh, Horica. Horica, kind of like, sorry. It's like Eureka with the whore in front of it. Sorry. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of the show, and I want to add uh, my, my fiance. She used to live with a uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. drag queen, and uh, you, you do okay in the drag queen world, Matt. You, uh, you're, a, you're a pretty decent, decent looking drag queen. Thank you. Uh, but the, the reason I called is I want to share a story with you guys um, on, on the da dangers of even moderate theism. Um, I was raised Greek Orthodox, and I quickly became when I went when I went to college. I studied abroad in China, and I was challenged on my Christianity, and I quickly became a moderate theist. And I remained a moderate theist uh, throughout college, um, and I I graduated in uh, spring in the spring of 2010, and uh, I speak fluent Portuguese. So I decided I absolutely love Brazil. I traveled once there before. And um, I decided to, since the job market was shit, I decided that I uh, would go ahead and teach English in Brazil. I'd never taught English before. So um, what I did was I found a program in Rio de Janeiro uh, to teach teachers how to teach English. Mm -hmm. So um, what I did was I bought, a, I bought a plane ticket and I bought, paid the tuition and I went over to, to Rio. And it was absolutely amazing. I was... I was basically in heaven for me. Um, the, the women were beautiful. The, I loved the language. I loved Brazil. I was I was in my element. Um, I was really excited to be there. Um, so once the course got started, I was also really excited because after four years of theory in college, you know, I, I'd learned something, but it was all faceless. So finally, um, when I when I got to this course, you know. I was really excited because I finally had an opportunity to, to use what I've learned. Okay, so I was really excited. And so basically, I didn't sleep for five days. I was so excited. And after five days of no sleep, you can get a little loopy. Mm -hmm. um, and I was a little delusional. At this point, I was a moderate theist. I, I thought there was a God out there, but I never really questioned it too much. Um, but I, I believed in God. I, didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't really religious growing up, um, but I thought there was a God out there. So at this point, I'm loopy. At five days of no sleep, I'm delusional. I'm seeing things. And I was in a new country. I just moved to Brazil. And the ideas that I got in my head, I thought that I was the Messiah. Okay? If, if you know anything about Rio, there's this huge statue. It's called Cristo. It's a big statue of Jesus. On, on top of this mountain that you can see everywhere in the city. So basically, yeah. I thought that I was the Messiah. There's all these signs, and two, my two best friends are both Catholic, and my, my Portuguese is very good. I, I look kind of Brazilian. Um, so for me, I was, in my delusional mind, I was thinking I was raised to be the Messiah. And, you know, after for five days no sleep, you know, it made sense to me. Um, I, I'm supposed to save these people, and it just made sense to me in, in, a, in a perverted kind of kind of way. So the, ne the next day, I, I managed to get like maybe about 45 minutes of sleep. The next day, and this is a skip, I never told my mother this because I'm, I'm 23, by the way. I never told my mother this because, bless her, it would, it would freak her out. Um, this crazy idea came to me that... For God, God was speaking to me at this point. I was, I was having psychological problems. Um, God was speaking to me, and he told me that to prove my faith. And, and just, just imagine, five days before this, I was, I was an intelligent, you know, moderate theist, okay? Mm -hmm. um, God told me that to prove my faith to him, and I get emotional when I, when I, when I think about it, God told me that I had to kill myself to prove my faith. So the next day, I went out 
And Rio de Janeiro, if you know anything about Rio, it's, it's, it's famous for its favelas, which are like slums, gangs, and drugs. It, mm -hmm. It's famous for it. It's, it's a huge city. I was wandering off into the city. I took, I didn't, I didn't before my host mother got up, I, I left, I uh, took off my shirt, I took off my shoes, I threw away my wallet, my keys, I didn't need that. And I was pacing across, uh, in, in front of the street, I was ready to jump in front of a busy street to jump in front of a bus to kill myself with God. Luckily, I was so manic and so deranged that I got busy. I was trying to break into a police station. I, I mean, the, the, the memory now is so distant, and there are bits and pieces that I don't remember. Um, uh, but to make a long story short, I tried to break into a police station, and these firefighters, they came, and I remember they put a gun to my head, and um, they realized that I was delusional, and they put me in a hospital, and they drugged me, they drugged me and I was there for five days, and eventually, I was, I was paranoid, and, and in this period of time, I remember bits and pieces, but I was, I was turning, I turned into Tim Tebow, I turned into Jesus, I turned into the Hulk. I was delusional, okay? And eventually, they gave me medication, and eventually, I was, I was very paranoid, I was seeing demons, and eventually, I told them who I was, and I remembered the address of my host mother, and then she came, and after five days, my family thought I was dead, because they hadn't heard from me. Um, eventually she came and I, I came to my senses and they gave me medication and I was medicated and I was able to control my thoughts. Um, and even though I'm now manic because of the situation, I have medication to control my thoughts. Um, but ever since then, I, I came, my, my mother flew over, uh, she's, she's a pharmacist in the Air Force. She flew over once she found out where I was, she flew over to make sure I was okay. And um, they, uh, they they flew so they flew me back to the United States. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I w go ahead. I, I'm you know I I'm really glad that you're okay and everything. I do have a concern though about, I mean we're talking about conditions. Um, I, I certainly see how religion and in particular even moderate religion can can play into this scenario. Yeah. But we're talking about a scenario. Um, where somebody's simply not in their right mind, that they're probably, uh, you know, perhaps chemically imbalanced and need a medication, whatever. Yeah. Um, so it could have happened to anybody, irrespective of what their religious beliefs were. I mean, it, you know. Yeah, but, but my point that I'm trying to make is that religion made, gave me the ideas to jump in front of that bus. And had I been in a normal situation, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had those ideas. And, yeah. and see, I, I'm not sure that religion's what gave you the idea to jump in front of a bus, um, because I can't really find anything within, you know, Christianity that that supports that idea. Well, well so the idea that what we're talking that about, idea. we're talking about is is somebody whose mental condition and their assessment of their religious beliefs leads to that. But, I mean, there's if you're gonna if you're gonna talk about what the cause is, you gotta you have to put it on both as a as contributing factors. But what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that the idea of a God, what I'm saying is the idea of, that, uh, my, in my mind, the idea of a God uh, planted that seed. So w w wherever that idea came from, it, it can be dangerous. Sure. That's my point. Sure. That is the point that I'm it's trying to make. It's probably easier to avoid not sleeping for five days than it is yeah, to that avoid is, that a is, religious that is, upbringing. That is true. There was a lot of factors involved. But the point that I'm I mean, trying you, to get you also at, you also mentioned that you turned into the Hulk at one point, and you know, these, these were these were these we were could be, we um, could be blaming Marvel Comics conditions. for that. These, these were these were psychological conditions. Yeah. But my, my point that I'm trying to make is that um, religion, even moderate theism, is can be dangerous, and these are points that Christopher Hitchens and Sam Harris make. Sure. That even moderate theism. To be uh, to be fair, correct. though. To be fair, though, the damage and the reason that many of us identify moderate and liberal beliefs um, as being dangerous doesn't really apply in this particular scenario because, like Jeff was pointing out, you know, we could blame Marvel Comics for you, your delusions about the Hulk. Yeah, but, so, but my, my point is that th those weren't the ones that were making me want to jump in front of a bus. I got the, And Charles Manson blamed the Beatles. Uh -huh. You know, um, when people are not in their right mind, it, 
we're in an awkward position here because you're you've put us in a corner where, to be fair, we feel that we have to defend religion from what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, and we don't. We're not I, big I, fans I, I of religion I, by any by any stretch. No, um, I understand. You, I understand your point, but. From, and I'm, I'm, my, I'd be more, you could have summed up the whole, uh, you know, danger in, say, believing that there's, uh, that there's an afterlife that you uh -huh. could go to, right? Um, yeah. By pointing out anybody that was more willing to die in any circumstances ever in the history of the world, more willing to yeah. die because they thought their soul was going to go somewhere. Now, that's yeah. dangerous, and you can say yeah. it in two seconds. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I appreciate, uh, appreciate the call. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Love the show. Sure. Take care. Bye-bye. We got Anthony in Los Angeles. How are you? Hi, uh, hi guys. Hey, hey. Hey, uh, love your guys' show. Thanks. Um, actually, I, I'm calling because uh, I'm a, an ex-Christian, um, considering becoming an atheist, and I need. Well, uh, if you're an, if you're an ex-Christian, what are you now? Um, I'm still in the middle, but there's, there is no. Well, all right, uh, all do, right. Do, do you, you believe a God exists? Some days I do, but some days I don't. It's like um, okay. I'm very confused. But, but I, I'm very much considering becoming an atheist because, like, I don't really understand, nor do I really make sense of, of the Christian doctrine anymore. Well, because the, the, I, I don't understand it, and it's like a lot of what people tell me about um, God, uh, God is love, God is, um, you know, all these great things, yet all these bad things are happening in the world. You know, I just thought so, it was a whole bunch of bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> so, quickly, um, you don't actually, it's, uh, you talk about becoming an atheist in the sense that you're converting to something. That's not the case. You know, every one of those days where, like, you believed in a god, that day you were a theist, and on the days where you didn't, those days you were an atheist. I mean, that's, that's all there is to it. Now, yeah. you can go, it's, and by the way, it's not just a matter of atheist and, and Christianity. I mean, you know, if, if Christianity, Christianity doesn't make sense to, to Jews and Buddhists and Muslims or Hindus, you know. Obviously, they're not accepting Christianity. So th there's the idea of, of consciously rejecting the claims of various religions. Um, but on every day that you've, you've thought, you know, you've considered your beliefs and say, to, and you're able to say to yourself, I don't believe there's a God, those are the days that you're an atheist. Well, now it's it's more more often that I'm that I'm feeling these, I guess, um, that I'm believing these things because, um, you know what, I, I'm I'm because I watch your show a lot, and um, those days where you just said, you know what, none of this makes sense. Um, it, it's good to have, you know, evidence for your beliefs, and it really makes no sense to believe something without you know having sufficient evidence. I'm sort of on the same boat right there. I like to um, question a lot. I'm, I'm a big skeptic when well, it comes to, I mean, basing my life on something. I mean, if, if I would have based my life on something like a religion or, or God, I would at least like to have sufficient evidence, you know, in order for me to do so. Um, I go to college, and, you know, I, I joined um, a Christian organization there, um, but I, I really got... You know, I really noticed how, how that Christian organization works. It's where you have to um, pay, you know, on, in order to go on trips with them. And it was really more of a, it ran more like a business. It, it didn't run like, you know, like something that Jesus would teach. You know, like, just like much of Christianity now, it's, it's based on books. Sure, um, but that's books, all, I mean, I, I agree with you, that, but that's all irrelevant. I mean, the, yeah. fact that the, the fact that there are Christian organizations out there um, that are scams, um, I'm sure you'll find atheist organizations out there that are scamming people. It, it, that's, that's separate from the issue of whether or not the fundamental claims that that religion is making are true. And if you accept it, then I, you're a Christian. And if you don't, then you're not. Are there, do you have specific um, issues, uh, issues from Christianity that you're having trouble letting go of? Um... I guess the whole fear base because the whole fear based um, thing about like, well, if you don't believe in our religion, then you will go to hell. Yeah, uh, that I, really I, messed it up for me. I, I faced that one. Let me let me tell you what I uh, how I dealt with that, uh, and I I remember the moment. I'm walking down the street, right, and I'm and I'm uh, I'm feeling skeptical about 
uh, about the, the uh, religion I was brought up with, and uh, it occurred to me, and, and oh, and I was having I was having trouble accepting the idea that 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 stuff wasn't true because of the fear, because of the fear of offending this you know, cosmic, world-creating entity that supposedly loved me and gave me everything, right? That I felt guilty about it and I felt fearful that I was going to be asking for trouble if I dropped a religion. And then I remembered how often I'd been told that that God was fair, just, uh, would never, you know, do anything to you that was, that was unreasonable, and I realized that God, the God I'd been raised to believe, would never in a million years do harm to me just because I used the brain that I'd been told he gave me. And the moment that I realized that, uh, I felt free to look at the actual facts without the fear. And five minutes later, I was calling myself an atheist. And, and if that doesn't work for you, um, how much time have you spent worrying about being punished by the Hindu gods or, um, you know, do you worry about the fact that you're not a Jew or that you're not a Muslim? Are you, are you sitting around in fear of the consequences of not believing in those gods? Well, no, actually, um, I, I was actually watching, um, Richard Dawkins, you know, Richard Dawkins, um, like event on, on YouTube where he was talking about, you know, like if you were to grow up in India, then you would believe in the Hindu God. Uh, if you were to grow up in Israel, you probably worship the Jewish God. So it's all based on where, where you're at and, and based on, on how you grow up, how, how you're sort of indoctrinated, how you're socialized into a certain institution, that is going to basically dictate well, I have a great profound, I'm not saying dictate, but have a great profound sure. influence on what you believe. Sure, it's the reason and, why most of the time we end up talking about Christian concepts of God on this yeah. show, because we live in a, in, a, in a culture that is predominantly Christian. Yeah, yeah, and um, I, I've grown up, you know, in, in Catholic church. Uh, that's basically, um, from the time I was a young kid to probably around the time, because I joined the military, um, in 2003, and all throughout the whole military, um, I was um, probably Catholic. Uh, I read my Bible and everything, you know. Uh, those times I was lonely, I missed home, you know. I, I used to read, you know, a couple verses that would, you know, bring me comfort or whatever. Um, but I just found that, you know, um, even the military is, is really heavily Christian influenced that time um, because I used to get, like, flyers and you know, free Bibles and, and you know, the little um, Gideon Bible, you know, New Testament. And it was sort of like hinting, like, you know, like nudging me on the shoulder, like, you, you catch our grip, you know, like, this is what we want you to believe, you know. Um, so that, that's the whole idea I got when I was in the military. Like, they, they were trying to push some kind of, you know, doctrine on me. Sure. And when I got out, um, when I got out, you know, I basically feel, felt like, a lot of veterans when they got out, you know, like, uh, you're transitioning to new society. Well, well, no society that you, you know, you left for four years, and then you're trying to get back in it, you know. You're, you're trying to, you know, make sense of everything right now. You're trying to fit back in. And I found a church, you know, I tried to join, and um, I joined a, uh, a Protestant church. Mm-hmm. And that Protestant church, I found, was a little shady because they, preacher always used to talk about, you know, giving money, giving money, you know, you're giving to God, quote unquote. Uh, you're not giving, yet he lived in this huge house, you know. <laughs> and well, I found I, I'm having, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm agreeing with you. I'm just having a hard time understanding, you know, what's left holding you back, the, the question that, that Jeff asked before. And, and you know, it, there's two options that, that have already been given here about how to deal with potential concerns about fears of consequences of not believing. Um, I, well, I, I, I don't know what else to say on that front. I think, it, yeah, I, I'm with Jeff there. Um, you know, these are just irrational beliefs. I mean, um, I have no evidence that any of this stuff's going to happen. Um, I have a good friend. He says, don't fear the unknown. Don't fear it. I mean, it really makes no sense. 
to fear anything. I, I see life more as this, like you live and you die. Death is a natural part of life, you know, like you're not going to live forever. And I don't, you know, understand why some, most people are, are afraid of dying because they, they feel as if, you know, this lifetime is, is, is sort of going to dictate where they're going to end up. But, you know, I, I just feel like it's irrational for me to believe these things. And I, you know, I, I, I agree more with the atheists now. Like, Well, welcome to the club. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I there's, really there's no official ceremony or anything, but, you know, the day you decide that, you know, you've, you've, you've given up on religion and, uh, and you don't believe that stuff anymore, then you're an atheist and welcome aboard. Yeah, we got conventions and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, um, <laughs> well, thank you. Um, uh, but I, I'm uh, just, you know, um, this is just a particular belief that I have. Um, I, I was listening to this one atheist and he was talking about, you know, don't label yourself anything. Uh, atheism is just a certain non-belief that you have about a god. But you're you. That's right. First and foremost, you're Anthony, or you're Jeff, or you're, you know, you're Matt. And you should put yourself there That's first. That's Matilda um, today. But. Yeah, you should put your, your own what you like, you know. Like, I like a lot of things. I like to play music. I like all these different things. And a lot of what religion was doing was, was it was hindering a lot of my progress because I was de devoting my time to this, to this image or this concept of God that I had in my mind. See, and, and I felt I, 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 informal. I think there's usefulness in actually adopting some labels because saying I'm an atheist doesn't put me in a little box where an atheist is the only thing I am. I'm a whole bunch of things and there's a ton of different labels that apply. But running around saying, no, 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 I don't want to identify with a particular label um, is potentially damaging because what it does is it leaves the other atheists who are out there and who think they're the only ones, leaves them hanging. Whereas by coming out and saying, you know, yeah, I'm an atheist, so what? I'm also, you know, uh, 20 other things that are 50,000 other things that I could possibly put labels on. It's just one of the many things. There's, there's a value in adopting a label and and running with it. Now that doesn't mean that everybody should do it or that you should necessarily adopt it as, as a definition of who you are. I mean, you are you. I'm in complete agreement. Um, but trying to avoid labels for the sake of avoiding labels, um, if they fit, I think is a little dishonest. I mean, it would be like somebody saying, uh, you know, uh, you're bald. No, I'm not yeah. bald. Don't you label me. No, I, I am in fact bald. It's a label. It's one that I dig, you know, it's yeah. all right. And I'm, uh, right now I'm in the closet with, with um, atheism um, because, well, I've only told a few close people, like my mom and dad know that, you know, um, I don't believe in God anymore. My brother knows um, and my little sister, but everyone else in my family, like my, my dad's side is, is huge, you know, really big on the cast, you know, Catholicism, you know, they're, you know, they're, they're really huge Catholics. Um, and my mom's side is, is um, heavily uh, Protestant Christian. Um, but, you know, I don't believe in it anymore. And I just uh, need advice on how to come out to people. Like, do, do you, oh, like, wow. not, like, tell people, oh, I'm an atheist? Or if the conversation comes up, um, just say, you know what? Yeah, I am an atheist. I don't believe that any God exists. Um, I like to base my beliefs on, on you know, rationality and, and logic and reasoning. My, my only advice is, you know, find whatever is the, the, the comfort level that you like. You know, if you want to be really overt about it, get the atheist t-shirts and the atheist ball cap and, you know, and, uh, and the atheist lunchbox and... and the atheist and, tattoos. And the atheist tattoos, right? <laughs> do do the, whole, the whole thing, if that's what you're comfortable with. If you, if because of your situation you need to remain under the radar, then do that. I mean, there's, um, uh, my, my, in my opinion, it would be bad if nobody who was an atheist was open about it. But that's not the same as saying that everybody has a responsibility to uh, make that their, their, uh, their big, open, flagrant lifestyle. Um, if, you, if you're not in that position, then don't. But it seems to me, if you're comfortable enough to say it to your parents that you don't believe in God anymore, yeah. then, I mean, it, 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 that's, that's the toughest one in my experience. 
Yeah, I'd say I'd say you're pretty much out. I mean, you know, we've recommended a bunch of different things, and every situation is going to be different. One of the things that I've said over and over again for a lot of people is, you know, it's probably best not to make any big deal about it. Go about being who you are and just being honest. Um, and eventually, somebody's going to, you know, ask a question. They're going to say, "Hey, what's up with you? Do you don't you believe in God?" And you can say, "No." And by this time, it should have been. It, it was obviously evident enough for them to ask. So you, you know, you're not being dishonest by assuming that you know it was, it was at least somewhat understood or irrelevant or none of their business. But in this case, you're already out to what sounds like most of your close family. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what there's left to do. Yeah. Um, so how did you guys leave your church? Because I, I I'm pretty much involved in my church, but I'm, I'm thinking about leaving because you know I just okay. Um, you, you just you just don't go anymore. It's it really is that easy. You just don't have to go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I well, give you permission to stop going to church. <laughs> Heck, we give uh, everybody permission and, uh, and to stop that, going to church if they want. And on that note, uh, feel free to email us. But we got full lines, and I got to try and get some more calls before we get the show over with. But you can email TV at atheist-community.org, and we'll do what we can to to get more information. But yes, you can stop going to church, my child. And, and if you need people to hang out with, try meetup.com. Yeah, there's really good for, sources. To see if you can find some atheists. <laughs> okay. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Anthony. Appreciate. It. It's for a lot of people, that's the hard part. It's not so much leaving the old group as being left with no group. Yeah, finding, finding anybody to associate with once you've dropped your entire you know, social network can be very difficult. Right. Um, Daniel in Denver, how are you? Hi Daniel. there, guys. I'm great. Um, I just want to first start off by saying, Matt, you're looking mighty beautiful today. Thank you. Um, uh, quick question I had because I haven't what, What's really wrong with Jeff? <laughs> Uh, yeah, what am I, chop liver? He's okay, too. You Thank know, you. I guess. <laughs> no. Uh, anyways, <laughs> quick question I, I wanted to ask because I haven't really heard you guys um, talk about it much on the show is um, what's your kind of take so far on your, uh, you know, Texas Governor Rick Perry um, trying to hold this uh, prayer rally in Houston? And I wanted to know if the ACA, um, you know, might be speaking out against it or if there might be uh, anything else up exactly that they're trying to do. We haven't got anything official, although some of us may actually be going down to Houston um, to protest along some si alongside some atheists there. Um, I think our government, our governor, is an embarrassment and a laughing stock, and I think it's absurd that in the 21st century you've got politicians saying, "Oh, we've got problems we can't solve, so let's get all the governors and people together and pray to Jesus to fix the stuff that I've been elected to fix." Um, for, for whatever reason, a lot of people don't seem to find that embarrassing. Um, right now, the Freedom from Religion Foundation's filed a lawsuit. I think that's a mistake. Um, I, don't, I don't think that this is something that, that is a clear legal violation, although it should be, um, because politicians aren't expected to check their religion at the door when they, when they take office. They're still people. They still have those rights. But what they are expected to do is to make sure that there is not explicitly or implicitly uh, a use of their official elected position to promote or endorse religion or to malign other religions or anything else. And so I think as a governor declaring that we're going to, you know, going to go to Houston and have this huge prayer rally, I think you are coming very close. You've crossed the spirit of the law, even if you haven't crossed the letter of the law. And because they haven't quite, as far as I can tell, crossed the letter of the law, that's why I'm a little concerned that the lawsuit might not be a good idea. But it's definitely just disgusting. Okay, then. Um, with that, uh, if I can ask just one more quick question. Sure. Um, I was watching a, kind of a recent talk between uh, Richard Dawkins and uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and you know they were kind of talking about um, atheism and atheists and how much kind of so-called media attention they get. And you know, um, when you talk with pretty much any any atheist, you know the most recognizable figure, I guess, is Richard Dawkins. You know, he, he seems to be, I guess, our so-called main guy to, to uh, you know, speak out for, for uh, other atheists. Um, but the thing about him is, you know, he's not so much um, a spokesman that can really reach, you know, the kind of common man, um, simply because, you know, uh, more of the topics he talks about, um, you know, do have to do with biology and evolution. And, you know, he does touch on, you know, a basis here and there where he can relate to everyone. 
Uh, but they were more talking about who you know we should we should look to or who we should uh, you know who might be able to take up the reins as that so-called atheist spokesman. Mm -hmm. And uh, an interesting you know it, it, and as far as I can remember, your name actually came up. Um, so really? I, you know, yeah, I find you um, honestly out of all the atheists I've I've kind of heard who speak you know publicly, um, you're the one that can best relate to the common theist. Um, you know, uh, and common you're bringing this up today. Uh, I guess so. <laughs> now, when you say my name came up, it wasn't Dawkins or, or Neil who brought my name up, was it? No, it was. Yeah. I think it was in the general discussion. Sure, yeah. You know, the, the general question. That's because question. I have legions of fans who run around all over the internet saying, "No, no, no, you meet, you want Matt, you want Matt," which is cool. But well, yeah, I I think I'd have to agree. Um, so I guess my quick question then would be: Do you have any plans? Like, would I mean, what would it take? I guess for the, the rest of us atheists to so-called get you into more public view because I think you can reach a lot more people Money. than anyone else can. Money. I, I take almost every speaking gig that anybody asks me to do. The thing is, in addition to this nonprofit organization and the, and the efforts down here, I also have a full-time job. None of us get paid for this, and by and large, I don't get paid for any of the speaking engagements. Occasionally, um, I will, but usually it's just... Uh, they pay to fly me out there, and I speak for free. So I've got to, you know, I've got to make a living. Well, in in Dawkins' case, he's had an entire career and sells tons of books, etc. Um, and then, in some cases, has really huge speaker fees. Um, so it's it's kind of about you got to get the name recognition in order to get the speaker's fees. But the, the big thing is, it's a terrifying prospect to toss out an actual career that earns me decent money. To, to travel around speaking when I've already got a venue um, with the show. I'm happy to do any event anybody asks um, as long as there's a time and a way to work it into schedules. Uh, but I don't see anything along the lines of it becoming a full-time career yeah. thing. As am I, and I don't actually have a career at the moment, but yeah. um, uh, <laughs> I just want to go on the record saying, you know, discussions about who we're going to turn to to be the spokesman. Kind of silly. Uh, because it strikes me as extremely silly. We're not a church here, right? Yeah. I mean, um, there, there are going to be people who are better at it than others, and they are naturally going to attract attention. And yeah. it seems to me it's covered. Why, why on earth? Are we having special, you know, panel discussions about who the next, uh, yeah, we don't need a who the next special successor. spokesman should be, the, the figurehead for atheism? I don't think, who needs that? Whoever resonates best with the people who are interested, that's who ends up doing it. Right. Yep. Anyway, we're, we're about out of time, so i got to let you go. Appreciate it. Yep, I appreciate taking my call. You guys Thanks, uh, Derek in Denver, how are you? Hi, uh, yeah, I had a, a comment. I believe... First of all, I'm not going to pretend you look beautiful just to conform to atheists. I'm an atheist, but I think you look disgusting. Okay, you, sorry, you wouldn't be conforming to anybody because whether, who, who you know, I all don't right. think I look beautiful. So what the hell does that have to do with anything? Oh, all right, but, but anyway, uh, uh, gender roles are beneficial to heterosexuals. Did, did and they we have okay. this call already? And, and the world isn't entirely peopled by heterosexuals, so your point's moot. No. I mean, I, I'll agree with you. Gender roles certainly are beneficial to heterosexuals. And there's other people you have to share the planet with. I don't know why this is so hard. <laughs> Bremer from Kent Islands, Maryland, how are you? Uh, pretty good. How are you doing, uh, Jeff, Madalena? We're doing great, Bremer. Uh, I have one question, which is a two-part question, if you have enough time. Yeah, I'm sure it's on a really easy subject, too, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. It depends on your take on it. Quickly. Um, I was just wondering what your perspective is about nature versus nurture debate and how it could tie into uh, morality. Sure, we can knock that out in two and a half minutes or so. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, uh, if you dig around on the Internet, you can look for the superiority of secular morality, which is a lecture that I ran around giving, and that will at least give you my take on morality. Okay. Um, Nature versus nurture, I don't know, are you just talking about that with respect uh, to what? Oh, I was talking about um, primarily genetics and uh, being raised in an environment, socio-cultural influences and uh, personal psychological influences. That's right, but with, uh, yeah, with but respect to what? You are. Yes, obviously there's, there's, there, 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 people are influenced by their nature and by their nurture, yes, obviously, and... 
Well, what is the specific uh, issue? I was curious because I was reading a, a book by uh, Stephen Pinker, mm -hmm. um, and he was, uh, he was talking about the compatibilist uh, theory of the boat, um, nature versus nurture, but... Um, sorry, I'm, I'm hearing a feedback on the, the video on the stream. Oh, turn your stream down. I'm actually far away from it on my phone, but I can still hear it. Okay. I can but, fix um, that for you. About that. But, um... <laughs> So, nature versus nurture is a huge topic that's that's been debated forever, and it varies. I mean, what do you, you know, depending on what you're talking about. If you're talking about, for example, somebody's sexual preference, how much of that is nature and how much of it's nurture, we don't know, and it's probably different for each individual person. There are people who may be genetically predisposed towards uh, attracted to, to being attracted to the opposite sex or the same sex to varying degrees, and there are certainly situations that we know of. For example, otherwise. Um, you know, heterosexual men in prison engage in activities, and in some cases, people voluntarily or through the, the course of their lives change what their preferences are due to things, external influences. So the big answer is we don't know, and we certainly can't solve it here in a couple seconds. And, and you drop the word compatibilism, which to me has to do with the question of free will and yeah. not with nature versus nurture, so I'm completely lost. Yeah. I mean, well, thanks I for your call. I don't mean compatibilism as in free will versus determinism, yeah. or compatibilism as in both. Uh, combined or coinciding, but I mean, uh, compatibilism as in they both uh, are not mutually exclusive, they go together in different aspects. Um, yeah, but that's probably true. Uh, the concepts are mutually exclusive. One is one thing and one but is... But he means not, but they, how they, affect, yes. they both affect sure. people to different degrees and we're, different We're uh, different all issues affected by all those things ways. all the time. And on that note, I gotta let you go. Thanks a lot for calling in. Uh, yeah. Wow. We can't solve all the big oh so we got morality today we got free will today we got nature versus nurture today uh, -huh. uh gender identity issues yeah uh, like that was to be expected because i'm just sure. amazingly hot right and now. and there's that one guy that insists on calling us every five minutes yeah uh and you know you can just stop because everybody here has instructions just to hang up on you when you call in charlie it's we're done with you you had your your had you had your five minutes uh which is way more than the 15 seconds you should have had and you're wrong yeah so there you go Sweet. So that's it. That's the drag show. Thanks, Jeff, for coming down. Thanks to everybody in the studio audience. Thanks to the people who did my makeup and helped me get ready for this. Thanks to all the people who donated to Camp Quest, uh, the very reason that I'm doing this. In all seriousness, I greatly appreciate it. We had a blast, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye, folks. fucking hot up here. <laughs> For you, maybe. <laughs>